Well, 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 you made it to the last part. So congratulations. And today we will have a look at finishing those long hair we started previously and also adding a little loose hair to the mix, finally bringing everything together. So let's get to it. This is where we ended up in the third part, playing with these values here and with the clumping curve, which is a never ending tuning process really. But now, instead of having this hair product commercial dark hair on our warrior, let's make him look a little older and grizzled. In other words, give him some Geralt of Rivia style, shall we? I've opened up my shading editor here and picked up this hair shader that we created in part 2. Now I like how these hair are already slightly greyish, but what I want to add is a lot more white mainly around the roots of the hair, like you see here, on these fine gentlemen in my reference sheet. Well, to do this, let me actually first duplicate this setup we've made previously. So have a second ramp uh, and a small tip. Once you hit Ctrl Shift D instead of just Shift D, it will duplicate your nodes while retaining the input connections, which is one of those handy little time improvement tools I like to use. Duplicate the mix node, because we will be mixing new colors above the ones we already have and put it on this line so it connects right away. But let's actually connect this second ramp to the factor socket to drive the transition between the new colors and then these colors here into color one. The second color then will be the new one we will be mixing in while the second color ramp will be driving the propagation of that color. You can reset this ramp if you want and make the second color gray, something like this. Not completely white though. This is already looking interesting, I'd say. But this is not really the result I want. You see, now the main part of the hair is white, while the roots are dark, which makes it look like the character actually dyed his hair, which is of course not what I'm after. So let's instead make this color dark to have the main part of the hair darker and play around with these previous colors we defined to drive the color around the roots. And again, if you've just played this video, I actually recommend going back to part two if you are unsure about this node setup. So let's make this color, let's say dark brown and this one as well, while this one will be our gray color. Now this is what I wanted and you can of course play with the hair info node propagation here in the color ramp. So if you want the white coloring to be more or less intense around the roots, you just clamp the black and white values, something like this. Bringing the two points together makes the transition more sharp. What followed in my process was some more playing with the white paint for the top hair layer along with some more combing which is always somewhat hard to describe because it's mostly just looking at the result, glancing at the reference every now and then and then shaping everything to look more to your liking. Now this gave me something almost resembling a mohawk so not really what I wanted so I pushed the part down a bit. Also, I made the darker colors a bit darker still here in the shading menu. And while I gave a lot of attention to these top hair, I omitted these back ones a little. So I increased the diameter the way I did for the top hair and then start them to comb them around the shoulders so they look more like gravity is affecting them. With that, I actually jumped out of the T-pose and displayed the character in the composition I wanted for the image I had in mind and continued combing from this perspective. Of course, this very much depends on whether you are making a character for animation that is supposed to be seen and looking good from all angles or whether you really have that one angle in mind and want the haircut to look best from that particular point of view. Here you can again see me just selecting individual long hair with C and then hitting Ctrl L to grow the selection to the whole particles after which I am able to comb just those selected hair. In this case, I'm making them longer here and putting the strand slightly behind the ear. And even though some of the particles are actually going through the earlobe, it probably won't be visible. It will look like the strand is going over the ear. But you can of course work on this and make each strand go perfectly above and below the ear. Now of course, just like we did with the beard hair, 
even in the case of these long ones, it would be nice to have some sort of singular little particles sticking out of the strands here and there. So let's add a new particle slot, use this hair preset and make it unique. Then name it hair loose. Let's actually get rid of these children particles here. I want to really have control over all these individual hair. Next, of course, set up the density vertex group here. Let's choose the top group. We won't be needing nearly as many hairs, so 100 will probably do for now. And now let's very quickly comb these to copy the shape of the head and hide them among the rest of the hair. Make them longer, so they stick out and reach all the way towards the shoulders, and then shape them to your liking. Combine the length tool with the comb tool. And just like we did last time, don't forget to select this root area of the hair and then subdivide these ends. This will give you a better way to shape this area. Now also set up the proper material. In this case, let's make it the white hair shader. And with that, let's see how it looks in the render preview. Oh, not too good actually. Uh, too thick and low res. So let's decrease the diameter a lot to 1 and 0 0.4, for example. That helps a bit, and also, let's come a bit closer to the head, so it doesn't stick out so much. By the way, here you can see that the actual hair particles have five steps, or subdivisions, upon render, while here in the viewport display, we only have two steps. So increase it to have a better idea of how the hair will look in the final result. Now oh, that's more like it. And while we're at the final stage of the process, we can actually do it for the rest of the hair too. Of course, this has a potential to really slow down your viewport response, but in my case, it seems to be quite okay. Now last check of the roughness values here, maybe lower it a little, and then last touches of the loose hair particles. And this is looking much, much better, I think. Finally, I made these loose hair even thinner and added some clothing. And yeah, that was it for this character. I mean, it is not perfect, and there could be endless amount of time spent on just this task, grooming this guy. After all, there is a reason there are grooming specialists in the 3D art industry. At this point though, I had to move on to another task my project required and leave this hair system as it is. Still, I hope this overview gave you a solid foundation and a usable workflow to apply to your own character work. So, this is the end of this tutorial series. If you liked it, it would be awesome if you shared it on your social media and definitely consider supporting the project over at Gumroad where you can buy some courses and then at Patreon where you can become a patron and get all sorts of bonus stuff behind the scenes and live streams and even hair presets from this tutorial series. So, consider checking it. But now, this tutorial series is over. Hope you liked it and until next time, Martin out.